Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I'm back with another viewer request video, this time showing you how you can build an ETL type pipeline uh, for real time workloads. So, you know, piece by piece um, pipeline using Red Panda, Pi Kafka, um, just PostgreSQL database, and a Red Panda Connect. And so what this pipeline is going to do is just simulate some user activity being generated by an application, stream that to Red Panda, which is a Kafka compatible streaming platform. And then a producer script we're going to write is going to generate user activity events like clicks, views, purchases, send that to a Red Panda topic called user activity. Then we're going to write a consumer script that's going to read that data from Red Panda, process it, filter and transform those events, and then store that process data in a SQL database. So another way I'm going to show you how to extend this too is then using Red Panda Connect, which can actually automatically export the process data to a real external database using a pre-configured sync connector that will automatically read the process data from a Red Panda topic and write it to a Postgres SQL table, completing the ETL process by loading this transform data into a final storage system. Um, so Really good pipeline, just kind of basic example for how you can use uh, Red Panda and Kafka and PyKafka specifically to perform ETL motions. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So the first piece of setup we're gonna to need to do before actually doing really anything um, is to just install uh, some required dependencies here. So pip install uh, PyKafka and SQLite 3, um, and you can also just use pip install SQLite, um, and I'll figure this out in a second. Don't actually really need SQLite. This is just, if you don't have a database you can use, um, you can use SQLite as an alternative database. But now what we'll do um, is, so I'm actually just gonna use Postgres anyways, so you don't really need it. But the main one you need to make sure it's installed is PyKafka 3, or PyKafka. Um, so pip install PyKafka, make sure it's actually installed here. Perfect. So PyKafka is installed, that's the important one. Um, and now we can start building our script. So what we'll do here is just go into Kafka examples, new file, red panda kafka.py, and then minimize this and this, and we can start building our first producer script. Um, so here, our producer script is going to start as we always start in our videos with installing all the necessary packages and dependencies. Um, so you hear JSON, random, time, logging, JSON for interacting with API data, um, ra random for generating random data since we're just simulating user activity here. So this is a self-contained pipeline, uh, time for date time objects, logging so we can interact and push error codes and have a fully logged pipeline. Um, and then our Kafka client and Kafka exception. This is for ins instantiating a Kafka instance and then a Kafka exception for better and error handling and being able to eject our own messages into the errors that Kafka is actually going to generate. So then once we're done with that, we'll just set up basic logging configuration to monitor the activity of the script. Um, so just, you know, nice little, nice to have there just to make sure we have easy ways to see what's going on with our script when it's in actually running. Um, and then what we'll do is generate a helper function that's going to simulate our user activity. So here, really what all this is doing is just generating some random data for this set of users. So four users here, these four users each have four different activities they can take. So click, view, purchase, and log in. And so what this is going to do is every time this function is called generate user activity, it's going to return a user ID with a random user from this group. It's going to choose a random activity that they were doing at that uh, random activity they were doing. And then it's going to generate a, the current time that they are doing it at. Um, so this is just easy way to create differentiated user entries just by using time as the changing variable there. Then our next process is going to be defining our function for actually processing user activity and then filtering out any unnecessary data. So here, under process user activity, we're going to tr first transform the timestamp into a human readable format. So take the timestamp um, and then here just kind of perform these functions. So stringify time, so convert this into a string and then also convert it to local time format um, from the initial activity timestamp. And then we're going to filter out view activities. So we don't care if someone just views our website. This is how you can also filter out user activity as it's generated for just non-impactful actions. Um, so here, 
we have if the activity is view, uh, isn't view, then process it and return that activity. If it is view, then we're just going to actually ignore that activity and not return it as well. Then the next script we're going to need is actually producing our user activity data to a red panda topic. Um, so here, find produce data, um, client topic name here. So here in our produce data function, we're just producing that simulated user activity data and then submitting it to a given Kafka topic. So here we're going to pull this from a list of topics. So topic equals client topics, topic name, and then encode UTF-8. And we're gonna pull these in at runtime to pull in the client. So it's going to come in here from the produce data, pull in the current Red Panda client, pull in the topic that is being used for that Red Panda within the Red Panda client. So here it gets sync producer. And then while this is active and while the state is true for producing data, this is going to call that generate user activity function, produce that uh, user activity through that function. So using this produce process user activity or generate user activity, it's going to then produce that data, jump it into JSON, jump it in a log info, and then also produce it to the red panda topic that it has been linked to. And then here you also have some error handling as well. And well, actually, so first, give this time sleep. So this is just going to basically every minute, it's going to reset and then produce a new user, ran, random user activity. Um, and then if there's ever any error, it's going to send an error message using the Kafka exception handling system to the logs and say, hey, there's an error producing data to Red Panda or an unexpected error if it's not a Kafka exception. So that's how we're producing our data um, to, that, to our Red Panda topic. Now, what we're going to do is define how we are actually going to be consuming and processing the data from our red panda topic. So for this, we'll get started with here is, so much longer one, so let's take this step by step. Um, so here, define, consume, and process data, bringing in the client, the source topic name, and then the process topic name. So we have our source topic that the data is being produced from, and then we have another topic that we're trying to send this data to. So here, we're going to get the topics. So here, pull out the source topic from our client, pull out the process topic from our client, um, define the consumer and processor object. So syncing to our consumer and producer topics as well. Then what we're doing is defining a batch size. So I wanted to make this as real world as possible. In the real world, you're gonna to wanna to process in batches for better efficiency. So you're not just constantly running this to process each individual data point, unless you really need that for your use case. Uh, but here, what I'm gonna do is say, hey, have a batch size of five, define a message batch array here, and then four messages that are in array, if, as long as it's not a null message. It's going to load the activity message, load the process activity. If the process activity isn't um, a view activity, then what we're going to do is append that to our message batch. And then once that the message batch has reached our desired length of five there, we're then going to produce it to our process topic. So here, for once it's reached that batch size, for each item that's contained within the message batch, we're going to produce and so dump our JSON uh, message that contains all of our information around that user and their activity at that point in time for, <coughs> for each of those five entries in our message batch, deposit them and produce them, or yeah, produce them to our producer or consumer topic um, or process topic. Then we're going to clear the message batch and reset it for the next five messages that we're going to collect from that from the consumer from the producer topic. Sorry, um, and then here, if there's any kind of errors, we just have error handling here for whether it's JSON or something else. And then also we have Kafka exception errors and regular errors here, just in case. So we have every possible type of error that could be thrown handled here. So now we have all the different component parts of our uh, pipeline set up. So all that's left to do is actually just put them all together. Um, and so here, what we're gonna do is just define a function as the main function. And then here we're gonna do is connect to Red Panda. So just whatever your Kafka client is being hosted, I'm just hosting it locally on my machine. So use localhost 9092. If you wanna know how to set up Kafka in a local machine, I have videos on that as well, so check them out. Um, but then what I'm gonna do is to just send a message that I've successfully connected, then define my, use, my topic names. So these are whatever your topics, you're calling them within Red Panda. So user activity, user activity processed, um, and then we're gonna start producing and consuming processing data. So here, starting data production, um, and then calling that produce data function, bringing in our client and our source topic. And then here, consuming and processing data. So once our data has been produced, 
this is going to trigger that series of functions that's going to collect that data in those batches of five messages and then uh, send them to the process topic for data that has already been processed. Um, and then here, just one last exception handling in case we have any errors, we have a way to handle it. Um, and that's really all I have for you today. I just wanted to put together a quick video showing you how you can use Red Panda and Pi Kafka together to manage uh, simple ETL pipelines. And I hope this hit the mark for my commenter, and I hope it hits the mark for somebody else you out there. But above all else, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Baby guy out.